What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome back to another build video. Today, we are taking another look at Faith with what is probably my new favorite Faith build. This is the Holy Crusader. So as you can see from this absolutely phenomenal fashion, I really wanted to lean into that Paladin, Templar, Crusader type fantasy. You know, a Holy Warrior throwing out Holy Damage, Lightning Damage, but still tanky enough to fight on the front line and destroy Heretics. And I think I've done a pretty damn good job at that. So this build is a dedicated Faith build. We are up at 60 Faith, but it deals a ton of damage with its weapons. Way tankier than previous Faith builds I've done, which were much more caster focused. Either way, let's jump into it. Of course, we are at 150, right at that meta as always. Vigor is up at 60, giving us lots of health. Mind at 24, which is a pretty healthy amount to cast with. Endurance at 27 to make sure we have a medium load with even our heaviest weapon. Strength and Dex are both at 20. That is the very first soft cap for them. So we're go up to there. In addition to hitting weapon requirements, we get a little pinch of damage. Int and Arcane are both at base. And then Faith, we pump all the way up to 60. Now, if you wanted to play something like this even later into the game, I would take Faith up to 80 and then start putting more points into Strength, Dex, and Mind. Uh, jumping on in. Oh, I'm real fast, I got a point. Uh, while this is called the Holy Crusader, if you name it the Holy Crusader, uh, the HO gets censored because it's Ho. So... It does, it makes no sense, man. It literally says holy under defense and damage negation, but you can't put holy in the name of your character. Uh, anyway, jumping on in, let's talk about the weapons. So we have a large variety of different faith scaling weapons we're going to be working with. The first being the Guardian Sword Spear. Now, y'all have seen Tox use this thing constantly, and honestly, it's just a fantastic weapon. Uh, the, as far as I know, it's only this and Loretta's that actually have this move set. So we have a nice running R1. That's really good. If people roll in, your follow-ups do this nice sweep. Now, what's great about this is people try to dodge the roll, and then they get caught by that. So just really solid all around. We have the backstep poke. Uh, on top of that, we have a nice little jumping sweep that comes down. And the charge sweep, this could actually roll catch a lot of people. You'd be surprised. Of course, we are going with flame strike on this, which is just fantastic all around. I mean, people will see the flame. They'll roll through the flame, and then they get caught by the follow-up. It does a lot of damage. You're looking at about 900 damage if both of those connect. Uh, and, you know, obviously, it just looks like it's ready to perch heretics. Moving on from there, though, we have quite a few. Let me actually go to order acquisition. Uh, America's Hammer. This thing got a buff in the latest patch, and it comes out way faster than it used to. Wha boom Bringing the crusade forward. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to deal with this yet. A lot of people have not seen it, so it's they're like, whoa, what is this? And they dodge too early, and then they get yoinked up in the air for about 900 damage. Uh, and then you follow up with either a Fortisax or an Ancient Dragons and do a ton of AoE damage while they're trying to recover. Uh, on top of that, it comes out pretty fast. Uh, this is definitely really fast, so this is the first hammer I've worked in with a build. And, you know, I mean, what kind of Templar or Crusader would we be if we didn't have a Holy Hammer to beat stuff with? Moving on from there, Halo Scythe. Uh, you can use either this or Angel Wings. Honestly, I like the Mikello's Ring of Light better. Uh, this is fantastic, mainly for the weapon art. The weapon art on this can do a lot of damage. It has very low cost to the point where it's basically spammable. I mean, just, you can see, I'm just throwing these out, throwing these out. And it's doing big chunks of damage. I mean, look how much damage we just did to this thing. This thing does way more damage than it honestly has any right to. Now, with that being out there, I will say the scythe moveset, not all that good. Uh, you know, it's it's very close. So compared to a lot of the stuff we do in PvP, this is definitely a lot harder to catch some people with. We don't have the pokes. We don't have the reach. Uh, the back step does a sweep when you're two-handing. When you're one-handing, though, it has a nice little slam down. So just keep in mind, not the strongest base moveset, but a really strong spammable weapon art. Great in 2v2 situations. Uh, moving on from there the inseparable sword. Now this thing is probably going to give you the best bang for your buck in terms of a pure faith greatsword. Uh, it's 765 unbuffed. Uh, a default of this is it also just instantly kills undead even without its buff. And when you buff it, we get up to 850. Uh, that blade beam that hits for about 800 damage or so. And this thing hurts. It also doesn't have the, the heavier move set of the greatswords. It has like the nice flowing strikes. So I know some people are big fans of that. Uh, but this thing, like, a lot of people don't expect this to hit as hard as it does. You're going to be hitting for about six to 700 damage a swing with this because uh, of how much holy damage you have that's going out. And a lot of people aren't built to resist that. So this definitely packs a while up. And hey, if you ever go into a catacomb, 
Skellies are dead. You don't even need to keep the buff up, which is probably the best thing about it. The buff obviously will just shred Skellies, but without the buff, you're still doing a ton of damage. Moving on from there, we have double coated swords. Now these are a no brainer with the faith build. You could of course use the Cypher Pata, but I mean, honestly, dual straight swords is just gonna be better than fists. Strong moveset. On top of that, unblockable blade. This thing decimates shields. If you have somebody walking at you with a fingerprint shield and they're like, her, her shield block, and they actually catch one of those to the face, it's gonna blow through their health. We're talking like 1200, 1300 damage, and then they just start panic rolling all crazy, and then you just chase them down and beat them to death. So, definitely a solid alternative choice that you can work with at any time with this build. Uh, moving on from there, Envoy's Longhorn. This is here strictly as a PvE choice. Uh, honestly, this is probably like the strongest PvE weapon in the game. Like, let me just let me just show you what this thing does. I mean, I, I haven't done a video with this because it's basically just PvE, but that was actually a really poor performance. This does better on bigger targets, but on something like a dragon, you're gonna hit. See, see, there we go. That was a good showing right there. Um, but the bigger the target, the better this does. These little bubbles do holy damage, so you don't want to use it against the Elden Beast. Uh, but they hit really freaking hard. I mean, we were we were showing it off on stream the other day. Uh, for example, New Game Plus fighting Azeeks, the big Decay Dragon. We did almost 10,000 damage with this thing. So the bigger the target, the better it's going to be. And on top of that, it still has that nice Great Hammer move set. So we have that swing that comes around really fast that a lot of people don't expect. And then also, these swings are coming out fast and you can trade with them. So if you want to use this for PvP, keep in mind... The bubble shower isn't going to be the best, but it can just pack a wall up simply because of the fact that it's a big old bonk stick. Uh, besides that, just some side stuff. Sacred Miser Cord. We have Lightning Ram on there for lulls, but this is basically here just to one-shot people after parries. The last thing you want is to get a parry in a gank and not kill that guy. So I'm a big fan of always having a pocket Miser Cord now. Banish Knight's Shield, because honestly, even though Golden is better, God, look at the fashion on this. Like, we can't we can't just use Golden when this looks as good as it does. And of course, we're working with a lot of Dragon Cult incantations, so the Gravel Stone Seal is a safe bet. You would get slightly more encant scaling out of the God Slayer Seal, but because of the Dragon Cult boost, this is going to outclass it for majority of our spells. Now, talking about this fantastic fashion, obviously, had to go for the Great Helm. I mean, is there anything else that says, I am a Crusader more than the Great Helm? I don't think so. Veterans Armor Altered. If you want, you could go for regular and put the big old cape on. Honestly, I'm just not a fan of the cape. I like the regular version. Besides that, I went Banished Knights and then Veterans Greaves. You could, of course, also go uh, Veterans Gauntlets if you want to get a little bit more poise but it's not gonna make a huge difference and it is gonna add a little bit onto your weight. Uh, as for going to Banished here, I would not because that's gonna put you below that Poise Breakpoint that's at 61. That's gonna be what allows you to trade with things like Katanas, Curve Swords, all that stuff. Uh, also, we have uh, just for, you know, AFK is the hottest thing this season, Jar Cannon, of course. Uh, moving on, Earth Tree Favor plus two, Great Jar's Arsenal. And because this is a dedicated faith build, Phlox Canvas Talisman and Radigan Icon. Now, Radigan Icon's definitely gonna help with quite a few of our spells. If you're doing strictly PvE, you might wanna consider going for the Godfrey Icon for the spell charge boost, but just to like show a quick demonstration before we run through all of our spells, uh, take Lightning Spear, for example. That's fast. That's like instantaneous. There's just boom, boom. And if we take off Radigans, it's still fast, but you can see there's definitely a little bit more of a startup on it. So for PvP purposes, I think Radigans is gonna be the best bet. Uh, some other alternatives, you could of course go Green Jar, or if you're using your weapon arts a lot, Shard of Alexander is always a safe choice as well. Uh, as for here on our flask, I like Lightning Shrouding because we do a ton of lightning damage with all of our stuff. Um, my primary weapon, the Guardian Sword Spear, this is actually fire because I went for uh, Flame Art on it to give it that Faith Scaling. Everything else here is going to be Holy, so you could go for Holy Cracked, but I mean all of our damage is going to be Lightning, so it's like... You know, well, all of our spell damage. So anyway, I really like going Lightning and then Crimson World just to allow me to face tank a mage while I get off a big juicy spell. Uh, but talking about big juicy spells, let's run into it. Of course, Beast Sling, Fast Finisher, and we're also going to be working it for the Fast Cast tech. Now, I will say this definitely kind of dances the fine line of being an exploit. Uh, a lot of people consider this to be tech because it's an animation cancel and it does require specific inputs to pull it off. 
but this is something that might get patched. But the basic idea is you bestial sling and then you can go straight into Hone Bolt. There's a couple different spells this works with. Some spells you can do a double bestial sling and then go into a third spell and you can see how it, it basically uses that bestial sling animation. You can do stuff like instant magma breath with that. Uh, but you know, it's tricky. I don't know if they'll patch this. In the past games, there was stuff like tumble buffing and none of that ever got patched. So I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't, mainly because of the fact that compared to other exploits, this requires specific button inputs and it requires some type of skill to execute. You need to be able to, to hit those buttons fast enough to pull it off. Uh, so Hone Bolt, obviously, because we can instantly chain into it and start spamming those casts. So in general, you're rushing somebody down, boom, and then I usually toss at about three. Either after three, they are dead, or, you know, you're, you're running out of stamina and whatnot. Lightning Spear, as I already showed, this is going to come out fast as hell with this build. So we want Lightning Spear here. This is going to do some nice damage, and it's going to be our primary trade. And what I mean by trade in this case is you see somebody trying to use a spell, Lightning Spear. You see somebody trying to take a drink, Lightning Spear. Anything that they are doing that looks like it's going to be a momentary pause in their motion, Lightning Spear is going to come out super quick, and it's going to hit consistently for about 700 damage. Four to six Lightning Spear, though. Whoo, baby. This got a big buff in 1.04, and these things slam now. Now, keep in mind, we're a little bit heavier, and with the poise we have, and that spell, and the buff it got to its spell poise, we can literally tank through, like, a jumping colossal weapon R2. So if someone runs at you with a greatsword, jumps up in the air, and smacks you, guess what? You're going to stay in the air and slam both those lightning spears down, and somebody's going to die. Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike also got a nice little buff in 1.04. Uh, this is already just a fantastic AoE because of its multi-hit nature. So if people are running up on you, I definitely would recommend doing the fast cast. But it comes out pretty quick. As you can see, I mean, that, that comes out pretty fast and especially right in front of you. And if you charge it, the range gets greatly enhanced. The damage also goes up, of course, just as the default of being charged. But that'll catch a lot of people. A lot of people do not expect that to go as far as it is. Probably the only downside of it is as an invader, you would... It, you'll end up killing other invaders quite a lot with that. You'll try to hit a host, the other invader won't see it coming, and he ends up getting caught in the crossfire. So just something to keep in mind with it. Golden Vow, of course, no reason to not use it. Barrier of Gold, uh, I just find this to be the best defensive one. I mean, you could go for Lightning Resist, uh, you know, Lightning Resist, Physical Resist, Holy Resist. I find that uh, I would rather shut down magic more often than not. So that's what I choose. And then lastly, we have Plassey. Now, a lot of people see Plassey and they're like, Plassey's not that good in PvP. You know, look at look at how long you're just sitting there in the air, you're shooting your beams. And keep in mind, the first two beams suck. That third beam actually has like a crazy amount of ghost range. But a lot of people misuse Plassey. The way you want to use Plassey is as a finisher. So the idea is somebody gets low, you run up, boom. And that's what makes Plassey so deadly because it's literally a on-demand, instantaneous, five to 700 lightning damage that comes out in a split second that has a huge AoE. I mean, I don't know about y'all, I don't know any other spell that comes out literally like within half a second that hits that hard. And you can do it while jumping. So it is your finisher. If you use it prematurely, you're gonna get punished. But if you use it as a finisher, you will just ruin people's shit. So anyway. Uh, that's gonna be about it. Let's jump in, do a bunch of PvP, and show you the Crusade. Alright, here we go. Y'all ready to see some fun shit? My lightning! Fuck that out of here. Oh man. Damn. I mean you you tried your best. Oh 
Oh, we got it. Oh, <laughs> shit. My dude was on top of the parry. God damn. Oh, this guy again. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Come on. Let's let's try. I'll, I'll use something different. I'll use my hammer. Oh, no. Boys! <laughs> I kind of feel bad. I think the gold breaker comes out faster than people realize. And it does have a lot of good poise on it. So if you can get them to try and trade into it. Let me show you how this is done. Oh my god, that guy really just have, like, no health? Alright, let's try and get another one with the, the Halo. I'm honestly not sold on the Halo thing. Like, it's, it's okay, but it's very easy for people to just bully this. I can do halos. The only problem with this thing is like outside of that, it's not exactly good. Oh, he's, he's doing a little roaring goat action. for the heal. Oh great, here we go. Looks like your body dead. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Somebody wasn't paying attention behind them. Now it's just you and me, now.
Alright, takes care of him. Let's go say hello to his friend. Scraped his bum. It looked like it connected. All right, well, he's going to be running. Let's do a little bit of this. Stop that shit. I can look, I can do stuff too. Same guy. See if things go any different for you this time. Yep, it's not gonna work. Nope, it's not gonna work. Nope, it's not gonna work. All right, that'll kind of work. Oh, it's not gonna work. Damn, Mona. Getting hit with that double dick. Oh, Prelate's Charge and Blood Flame. I've seen this trick before. No, he has the flask up. Oh, never mind. You died. Get fucked, you exploity little bitch. Oh, no. Not Mona. Not again. Alright, let's see. Uh, this is my weakest weapon. Heal me. Oh, that's the wrong spell. Feel bad for this person at this point. Bah! Bah! I don't I don't really see a lot of Ginyu force here.
Ooh. Hey. Hey. These guys, what is this, Fight Club? Nope, it's a gank club. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. Oh, that's one down. You gotta love it when they pretend to be honorable just to partake in some bullshit the second that they can't pull it off. Oh, that was a poor devil. Get fucked, gankaroos. Suck my big golden dragony dick. 